Lee, quantum mechanics is perhaps the most tested theory that uh, we have in modern physics. It explains all of the science and technology of the modern world, and yet people, you question, what are the fundamental aspects of it? How can this weirdness of uh, things being in two places at the same time, entangled, probability smearings, how can all this make any sense? One way to say it is that if you think that physics is supposed to give you a picture of reality independent of us that tells you in every experiment exactly what's happening and why, which is what Einstein and everybody before Einstein thought physics was about, quantum mechanics doesn't do that. Quantum mechanics talks in terms of probabilities and not even probabilities, some things prior to probabilities. If you scatter two particles off of each other, quantum mechanics doesn't tell you what's happening in an individual event. It tells you in a class of events what are the probabilities for different outcomes. Right. Right. Einstein never bought it as a fundamental theory. Schrodinger never bought it. De Broglie, many others. And I've never been able to buy it. Now, maybe I'm dumb. Well, but... it's a dumb. I think it's a, it's a prejudice because of a probabilistic way of looking at a world, the world being all smeared in some way is uncomfortable in our modern way of thinking. But if no experimental data contradicts it, it's, uh, it, it, it looks pretty impressive. It is pretty impressive. But, you know... People have tried to devise all sorts of experiments that would show some deeper underlying structure and that would result in the probability, and it never has happened. The sure. probability always, always sure. is maintained. Sure, and the key thing that we've learned is that any theory that goes beyond quantum mechanics and gives a deeper explanation, a deeper description, has to be fundamentally non-local. This is the spooky right. action at distance right. that Einstein talked about. What, what, what does that mean, it specifically? It means that if you have an atom in an excited state and it decays and spits out two photons, right. that the state of those two photons remains what we call entangled. And that means that if I make a measurement on this one, and I make a measurement on this one, the probabilities for the outcome of this measurement depend on which measurement I choose to make over here. Even though the distance between them could be vastly greater than the speed of light could uh, travel yes, and everything. Yes, and that's really, that experiment has been done, and well, it, it's been done up to hundreds of meters. And maybe I'm wrong about that. Yeah. Maybe it's a few kilometers. Yeah, yeah it, keeps, I, it keeps increasing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the master of all of this is Anton Zeilinger and his right. group in Vienna. Right. And um, so, but you know, Newtonian physics worked and works, and it's, you know, it's our understanding of why these bridges stay up and why the water is different from the air and so forth. But it's fundamentally misconstrued. It's fundamentally wrong, totally wrong when it comes to a description of nature. So there's no problem in my mind with quantum mechanics working very well, but being totally wrong. And, and but, working at a certain level. Yes, yeah. Now, okay. where you have to believe that, if you believe it's wrong, you have to believe that there's a crunch somewhere. Okay. One place I believe the crunch is likely to be is in cosmology. That is, we use quantum theory to study systems which are tiny compared to the universe as a whole. Okay. Some of us, and I certainly am guilty of this, have the pretension to study the subject of quantum cosmology, where we try to put the, line, the description of cosmology in the language of quantum mechanics. So we talk about the quantum state of the universe. Okay. Um, this, my bet is that that's completely wrong. That at some point between our laboratory and the universe as a whole, quantum mechanics breaks down. Well, we know quantum mechanics is critical at the formation of the universe because the distances were so small they become quantum mechanical, right? So in terms of origins, it's critical. Maybe, yeah, maybe. What's, that, what's the alternative? Well, one of the things that the universe, you know, the universe, if you trace back to the Big Bang, it gets denser and denser and denser. The curvature, right, right, right. the radius of curvature gets smaller and smaller and smaller until you approach 
the Planck length, right. which is you know 20 orders of magnitude smaller than an atomic nucleus. Right. Okay. But we don't know how large the universe is now, so we don't know how large in spatial extent it is. It's still, it might be, have this extraordinary density and still be, you know, relatively large. And this, of course, depends also on whether inflation was real or not. Um, but, but certainly, you t there are scales where we believe that quantum effects must become important. And an old hypothesis, one of the oldest hypotheses in the subject, is that when you include quantum mechanics together with general relativity, the singularity goes away, and there is a time before the Big Bang singularity. 